I feel like if Meghan Markle had kept acting and had actually scored a big franchise, she would have become Rachel Zegler. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and when I think of today's actresses, I can't think of anybody who looks more entitled than Rachel Ziegler. She started in West Side Story, and she was just a kid. I think she was like 17 when she got the role. Spielberg cast her. And uh, during that phase, I just could sense I wasn't going to like this girl. And now the whole world is just so annoyed and angry by her. She's been trending due to comments that she said about Snow White. And I want to break down why the internet is so mad, why I haven't been a fan, and the fact that it's now gotten to a point where, yes, branding experts warn Rachel Ziegler backlash could ruin Disney's big budget Snow White remake and predict executives will be having a crisis talks in order to win back fans ahead of its 2024 release. All right, so who is Rachel Ziegler? She's a young actress. She was a Maria in the new West Side Story remake. She's also going to be in the upcoming Hunger Games remake, uh, the origin story. And yes, she's going to be playing Snow White. And look, I, that's a whole issue. Skin as fair as snow. A lot of people are upset that she's, you know, Latina background. Um, that's, I don't want to... That's not what I'm going to talk about here. That's that's not my problems right now. That may be some of your problems. Whatever. Have that debate later. I want to talk about the woman herself and her entitlement and the frustrations because she's facing a lot of backlash over her comments that she's made about the remake as they've you know begun to resurface. Now, I just want to re rewind. Well, before I even rewind, let's just... I I'm not ever going to see this remake. I mean, I may go review it if Disney lets me just so I can see how bad this thing is. But here are your seven dwarfs, people. These are the seven dwarfs in the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs remake. The Seven Dwarfs Friends. Ah, yes. This looks wonderful, doesn't it? I can't wait to watch these. And there's the prince. Who's not going to be a prince, guys? He's not going to bend to those gender norms. He's just the, the, the male lead, who's Rachel says, we might cut him out of the movie. Uh, I, what is this? I mean, like, wh why make this movie? Like you can't have the dwarfs now. And there's like dwarf act actors, like dwarfs, like a wee man. And they're like, w I wanted a this gig. So now we can't even get Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs as a gig. You're going to now hire all these other people instead of the one movie where we should be able to get at least seven roles for us. Uh, it's just this movie is upsetting everybody. They're going to be magical creatures, apparently. I, but it's still, I think, dopey and lazy. I, wish, I wonder which diverse friend's going to be sleepy. And well, I'm sure it's not going to be a mess at all. It'll be the white one for, for sure. Uh, but I just wanted to go back because look, I noticed this way back. I, I Lewis reminded me last year I had issues with this girl because this is the same girl who who complained I wasn't invited to the Oscars. She literally commented, "I can't wait to see what you'll be wearing." Oh, I'm not invited. I'm not invited. So sweatpants and my boyfriend's flannel. Like she had the audacity, to be like I'm not invited. Now, she's removed those comments from her Instagram post where that was, but the backlash, because she said that, and her fans are like, how dare you racist Oscars not invite this girl, who's not nominated, to the Oscars? Her movie's nominated, yada, yada, yada. So she went and, like, basically guilt-tripped them to invite her to the Oscars. And then she became a presenter, and now suddenly, ooh, she got to go to the Oscars. And I just found this so offensive to Spielberg, to everybody, like, Really? You had to go, like, shame everybody that you didn't get an invite? You weren't invited because you didn't get nominated. That's how this works, typically. Now, some studios will pay to send their talent there to promote their films, but they didn't want to do that. Clearly, Spielberg probably wanted to be the spotlight that day uh, for his film, which I don't think won a single award anyway, did it? I, I, maybe some art direction or something. I don't even think it won anything. But that's for the show's producers, and I would say Spielberg. And so for her to, like, guilt trip everybody, immediately I was like, and I, I was reading comments, we were seeing things, I'm like, oh, man, this girl's just going to be so annoying. Entitled, expect the world. And sure enough, as Snow White has begun, let's gear up for you. You ready for some quotes from Rachel Ziegler? What do you mean by that? I mean, you know, the, the original cartoon came out in 1937, yes. and very evidently so. <laughs> um, there is a big focus on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Super weird. Super weird. So we didn't do that this time. <laughs> so, no, so no prince or a different kind of prince? We have a different approach to what I'm sure a lot of people will assume is a love story just because, like, we cast a guy in the movie, right. Andrew Burnap, great dude. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's... 
one of those things that I think everyone's going to have their assumptions about what it's actually going to be, but uh, it's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. And whether or not she finds love along the way is anybody's guess until 2024. Um, I mean, Snow White's all about the love story. That's what the movie is. Why are you changing the story? Go make a new story. It's about seven dwarves, the Disney version, seven dwarves and a love story. Whether you like it or not, that's what it is. All of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. But it's it's one of those that's things. So true. It's yeah. an inner it's an inner journey that she goes on to yeah. find her true self, and she meets a lot of people along the way that that make the journey really incredible. I know. Oh, I I can't wait to see this non Snow White Snow White. Are you guys excited too? So appealing and so special. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. <laughs> ah. You, Good, good advertisement. Like, I'm being so serious. I watched it once, and then I went on the ride in Disney World, which was called Snow White Scary Adventures. Doesn't sound like something a little kid would like. Was terrified of it. It's still a ride there that many kids like, Rachel. And now you're, like, literally hating on the brand itself that you're basing this movie off of which is making Snow White fans dislike her. Never revisited Snow White again. So I watched it for the first time in probably 16, 17 years when I was doing this film. I mean, this girl is... Annoying. <laughs> I'll say it for you, Cal. I know you can't say it, but I'll say it. And yeah. The reality is that the cartoon was made 85 years ago and therefore it's extremely dated when it comes to the ideas of women being in roles of power and uh, and what a woman is fit for in the world. And so when we came to reimagining the actual role of Snow White, it became about the fairest of them all, meaning who is the most just and who uh, can become a fantastic leader and the reality. I mean, couldn't we take that interpretation from the other original? Like I could, that fairest of them all can mean that. Is, you know, Snow White has to learn a lot of lessons about coming into her own power before she can come into power over a kingdom. I love how, you know, this, you know, this woman, Snow White, let's just remind everyone, Snow White's 14, okay? Now, there's always an argument of how old was the prince, and some think older, but the records seem to say he was 18, uh, and uh, whatever, but she's 14, she's not a young woman, is that, when does it count? I don't know, guys, she's a kid. Movie's about, like, a kid, love story, seven dwarfs, it's a kid's movie. Now, I, I want to share this because Cozy with Angie, man, she does a mic drop. Now, it's is long, but I just wanted to play this because I could see her all day and talk about why I think Rachel's a fake feminist and why she's entitled and just so fake and phony and just annoying. And this is the woke type of problem that Disney keeps doing where I don't think they even mean it or understand what it means. But I wanted to give Angie the, 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 the mic here because, man, she's about to do a mic drop. She's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. I could literally write a PhD thesis on the pseudo-feminism that is criticizing Disney princesses. Criticizing Disney princesses is not feminist. Not every woman is a leader. Not every woman wants to be a leader. Not every woman wants or craves power and that's okay. It is not anti-feminist to want to fall in love, to want to get married, to want to stay at home, to be soft, to want to be a homemaker. None of these things make you less valuable as a person or a woman. The criticism of Disney princesses is always based on one of two things. Criticizing women for things that men get to do unquestioned or writing off a woman entirely because she is or wants to fall in love. We criticize Princess Ariel and completely write her off and say that she's pathetic and has no sense of self because she gave up her voice for the sake of a man, failing to realize that the entire premise of the movie is that he fell in love with the voice that she thought she had to give up because of the evil sea witch in order to be loved by him. And we write off her incredible ability to see past the prejudice that she was born into and think for herself and find out whether or not humans actually were bad and explore her curiosity and find things out for herself instead of just believing everything that everybody else was telling her to believe. We completely write off Cinderella's incredible capability of having hope and staying kind in the face of years and years and years of abuse solely because she fell in love and happened to marry a prince. And we say that she was waiting for a prince to come save her from her problems when in reality there's no real indication of that in the movie whatsoever. When a woman does something altruistic she's pathetic and has no 
no sense of self. But when a man does something altruistic, he's a hero. When was the last time you heard anybody criticize Hercules for jumping into the depths of the underworld in order to save Meg and giving up everything he had worked his entire life for so that he could be with her? All you're doing is criticizing women for things that men get to do unquestioned and denying them their right to be or fall in love. Real feminism is about depicting women who have different wants and different needs and different personalities, who come from different races and ethnicities, and depicting them all as equally valuable with something to offer and something to say and a voice that should be heard. Thinking that a woman is any less valuable because she falls in love or because she accepts help from somebody instead of girl bossing her way through her problems is not feminist. I mean... I, 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 and this is the problem, right? Because everybody's got to be a girl boss now. As Rachel says, she's got to be a leader. She has to make her own choice. Da, 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 da. No, okay, we've seen that story now a ton of times. Don't just turn all the classic stories that we grew up and loved. Some people want those old value, whatever. Just don't make Snow White. Make a new girl boss movie and see if people care and want to see it. The problem is we keep rewriting our history and then saying, well, all girls need to do this and they need to follow that and empowered by this and that. And it's just not the case. I think Angie's so spot on, well said. Uh, and and the reality is this is not good for uh, Rachel Ziegler. And to make it worse, she's now done this weird apology. Is it an apology video? It's very unclear because there's a strike right now. She can't say anything. But then this video just surfaced. And I can't find out where this came from. People are saying this is not due to Snow White. This was an old but it kind of ET put it out there. It feels like it's from something. I don't I don't know where it is, but now this is added to it because people are saying this is her apology video. I don't think it is. I think this was her reacting to trolls before Snow White, before she was allowed to say anything. But here's a little bit more taste of Rachel's. Please feel sorry for her. Video is gonna get taken out of context. And I know that at this point I can't really stop people from doing that because that's what my whole existence on the internet is, is just me being taken out of context and stuff uh which is fine that's what i signed up for isn't it um but i never want it to come off as me being ungrateful for the opportunities i have when i say that this has been the biggest adjustment of my life like understanding the way my life operates now being who i am and the things that i've been so fortunate to make it comes with so much ground so much ground that i never thought i would be able to cover and that people think i'm doing poorly and other people think I'm doing gracefully, and I don't think I'm doing it at all. <laughs> so when I tell you that it's hard, I just mean to be inside my brain. <laughs> That's hard. And I'm there 24-7. I can't, I can't get out of it. And, and I, I don't know if that will make sense, but that's where I'm at. I'm so grateful for the things that I'm able to do. And a lot of what I'm able to do is because of you guys. And I'm... So unbelievably thankful for that. At the end of the day, I look at this trip and think if somewhere like that can exist, and so can my tiny pink bedroom from New Jersey, I can also be having the greatest time and simultaneously wishing people would stop sending me death threats. And maybe that's a weird takeaway for this video. This is a life. This is real. It's filled with a lot of beautiful moments and beautiful people. I have a loving family, an incredible boyfriend that I love so much, beautiful friends and family, people that I miss. It's a, it's a privilege to miss people the way that I do. But it's hard and it's lonely. It's very lonely. I just know that if that loneliness can exist, so can other things and I will be okay. Maybe that's a weird takeaway regardless. Um, this is not supposed to be anything other than. I can't find the full piece of that, but there you go. So in her defense, look, she's young. She's very young. She's been thrusted into this limelight of Hollywood and fame. It's the only thing I can give her of like, yeah, look, I'm not trying to pile on. If somebody asked me her opinion, I think some of these things she said are dumb and she needs to be very careful. These are massive brands and she is a brand and it's all connected. And we live in this now world of Hollywood where, yeah, just people are super woke girl boss. To, and it's like, quit speaking for everybody. Like, quit, it just, it comes across as phony. And this movie looks phony and forced and stupid. 
Grant, we haven't seen it yet, but I, I, I can see enough to know. I don't. What is this? This isn't the movie. This isn't Snow White. And it's like it has nothing to do with her skin color. It just has like, what is this movie? <laughs> Who is this for? Uh, this is like the classic original fairy tale from Disney. And sure, I could argue. I understand some of these arguments of dated. I guess it is um, the kiss or whatever you want to you want to argue that. Fine, take the kiss out of it. But why can't we still have it be about seven dwarves and a prince and falling in love? What's wrong with that? And sure, take the kiss away. Fine. But what, what, why is it strong? It's trying so hard to not offend anybody that they don't even realize that they're just completely phony. This whole thing is, and that's the problem. That's to me what Rachel Zegler feels like. And again, she's young, she's inexperienced, she needs so much more training, and she needs to learn how to just stop talking about bashing the brand that she's selling. Uh, but uh, it's there's a narcissism entitlement level that again reminds me of somebody else, uh, another once actress. I don't know. Am I crazy? What do you think? Are, do you think that the, the backlash is unfair? Do you like her? I want to hear your thoughts down below, but I wanted to break down why Rachel Ziegler's doing and why I'm just haven't been a fan. Hopefully she grows up and learns a little bit more and uh, just wises up to this industry, which will eat and spit you out, but make sure you hit the bell, the, the thumbs up uh, and the subscribe button. And then again, leave me your thoughts down below on this and so much more. We'll be live later today to talk about Netflix. Am I suing them? What's going on? Stay tuned for that and so much more here on Popcorn Planet.